that ain't no little one. And these are invasive, so we're not putting any back. Welcome back to Outside the Levees. Where the levees end, the fun begins. In this video, I tried my hand at bank fishing. It took me a while to find the bite, and I wound up finding an invasive species called the Rio Grande Cichlid. Then, I went to brother-in-law's to cook them up on the grill. Now let's get it started. All right, y'all, I gotta give you an update what's been going on. So my wife, Tia, started a new job that has her going by daylight. So I've had to take on the role of the morning caretaker for our sons, Jack and Milo. So I get them dropped off by about 8.30. Then I have a short window from about nine till noon to film videos. And between the heat and humidity and the daily thunderstorms, it's become almost impossible to get a video done. So that's why you haven't seen much content from me lately. I'm busy being daddy daycare and honestly the weather, the water temperature is not really conducive to it right now. But one idea I had to come up with a solution for this is to go bank fishing. Not having to deal with a boat helps me maximize that window of time between nine and about noon to get some fishing done. But the thing is I haven't bank fished much so I have to figure out the spots. So what I decided to do was just start bank fishing for brim to get out there with some worms and crickets and see if I could catch them. Today I'm using these little size six panfish crappie hooks. We're gonna use some worms and some crickets. And I'm going to put a drop shot on there. This is a size three drop shot. And just tighten it up with my pliers. There we go. So hook, drop shot, and cork will be next. Just a little one inch snap on float. It's about how much depth I got, a foot and a half. And we will see my friends. I'm gonna start with crickets. So I've got this ridiculous little black bag of crickets. I don't think this is gonna work out well. Let's try it anyway, right? All right, so I got my 10 foot salters jigging pole. That way I can just kind of dip it on out there. I fished by this oak tree for a while. I had a bunch of bites from small brim that kept taking my crickets but really nothing of any size, so I decided to move on. I went for a drive and stopped by this bayou when I noticed a lot of fish activity on the surface. So this spot is all little bitty sail cat. I saw shrimp jumping, bait everywhere, but all I caught were these little saltwater catfish. I saved a few of them to use as bait, but I pretty much called it a day at noon. I don't know, y'all. That's frustrating. You know, you would think something as simple as just catching brim from the bank, it would happen. You know, even if you get four or five, whatever, I mean, you're fishing with worms underneath an oak tree, you know, seeing bait, like, what the heck? I don't know. You, I just feel so, like, it, it, it. it's hard because, like, I'm pressed for time. You know, by the time I drop the kids off and then get to the water... I've got a few hours before it's like really, really hot. The water temperatures are up so high. The fish don't want to do anything. It's tough, y'all. Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll try tomorrow again. So the next day I got the boys off to school and decided to hit it with a fresh set of ideas. I was going to try some new spots and I wasn't giving up yet. All right, back at it again today. Still chasing brim. Uh, couldn't get on them yesterday. I think, you know, between the heat and I don't know, honestly, I also came to a totally new spot. Still bank fishing. Going with worms today instead of crickets. Again, being careful of snakes. Being careful walking the rocks. I like this long pole, man. Oh, getting a bite right away. Come on. There he is. Go. Take it. Take it. Oh, dang it. Ah, damn gar fish. And it was a gar hole. I had already burned a little bit over an hour. I really needed to make something happen. Otherwise, I'd wasted another day. All right, y'all, just caught a cichlid. I didn't have the camera rolling. Let's see. There he is. Oh, what is it? Oh, a bass. All right. All right, big man. Go ahead with your bad self. Mr. Bassy Bass. Alright. 
Oh, another bite. There's another one, y'all. We got them fired up now. Cichlid. There's a cichlid. Check that out. That is a beautiful fish. Golly, that's a pretty little fish. So the Rio Grande cichlid is native to southern Texas and northern Mexico. It's a warm water fish with turquoise colored spots and it's invasive here in Louisiana. It's believed to have gotten here from folks who kept them in aquariums. Due to its invasive status, it's illegal for me to release this fish back into the water. All right. Don't know if it's the same one I caught before, but hey, we catch it now, y'all. There he goes. Got him. Another cichlid. Heck yeah. All right, we in the cichlid hole, y'all. Check that guy out. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my GoPro. All right, y'all, I finally found the bite. Something told me not to give up. You know, this is one of those days where I got a late start, bringing the kids to school. It's already hot. I didn't get any bites at my first two spots, and I was just kind of almost ready to go home. I said, well, let me try this one last place. This is a total different body of water. Uh, this has more of a natural flow than the stuff I've been at. Man, so we got uh, these cichlids are biting. So I'm gonna keep trying to catch them while they're biting now. Hopefully we get enough to eat. I don't have a lot of experience with this fish, but hey man, we're gonna figure it out, that's for sure. There he is. That's a good one. Oh, he come off. Damn it. There he is. Got him. Get him. A catfish. How about that? That must have been what it was, y'all. A big old cat. He normally shows up when he needs to on outside the levees. Bucket. Ooh, you don't like that bucket. All right, y'all had to repair my hook. Got it back. This is not meant for catching catfish like that, but hey man, bank fishing, jigging with a long pole. I like it. This is how most people get their start fishing, like cane pole on a bank somewhere. A lot of people don't grow up with access to a boat or all the waters that we have. So bank fishing somewhere really old school i like it personally i didn't have to launch the boat i didn't have to gas the boat y'all know me i'm not picky about what i eat i've already got enough to eat and i like this long pole i like this i really enjoy fishing with this i believe it's a 10 foot yeah it's a 10 foot two piece made by salters i had got it a few months ago for sockley fishing and i mean dude it's so chill like sunshine and breeze blowing and i'm dipping a worm catching fish you know Cichlid. Hey, all right. He revealed himself, y'all. <laughs> Another cichlid. I don't know if y'all can see, man. That's just a pretty, pretty little fish. Look at all the color. You can see why someone would want that in their aquarium. One more for the bucket. Let's see if he's got some more partners over there. It is a cichlid. No, it ain't. See, that's a brim. I'll try setting a hook this time, y'all. There he is. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh, that's a nice one. That ain't no little one. That ain't no little one. There he is, y'all. These are invasive, so we're not putting any back. Even if we use them for bait, if they're too small to eat, not putting any back. Oh, he's on. Ah, that's one of them perch. <laughs> they a sunfish. It's just a sunfish. That's good catfish bait right there. At that point, it was getting really hot, and I knew I had enough to eat. I stayed to catch a few more, but really the biggest thing was knowing I finally had enough content to make a video. All right, y'all, we got them all cleaned up. So that is my Rio Grande cichlid right there. Scaled, gutted. That's that little bass who decided to come play. And that's the catfish. Old Catfish Johnson, he shows up on outside the levees all the time. So all I'm gonna do, we got the Traeger at my brother-in-law's house. 
we're gonna run like a you know a 350 temp you know just kind of let this fish cook fish cook so fast we just want to get it in there we might even go lower let it get some smoky flavor just gonna go simple lemon pepper you don't have to do too much here it's fish you know you don't want to over ever overdo it with fish got some olive oil spray just gonna get on there a little bit keep it from drying out I'm gonna hit it good with the lemon pepper especially the, the ones like with the skin on flip it more lemon pepper And once you get everything seasoned up real good, go ahead and put it in an aluminum foil. And that's it, get it to the grill. But since we didn't catch a ton of fish and we got a ton of people to feed, we're gonna go with some steaks as well. Got them Walmart ribeyes, you heard me? Them Walmart ribeyes. Hey, if you know how to season and cook a steak, it don't matter where you get it from. Main ingredient for good steak, a nice coarse salt. Kosher salt, sea salt, if you can't put that on your steak, you're not gonna have a good steak. If you don't put enough of it, you're not gonna have a good steak. A little bit less than an inch on these, but they can handle a good bit of salt, don't be scared. After we get our salt on, we're going with some fresh black pepper. And to sweeten it up just a little bit, give it a little bit of barbecue flavor. This is our Memphis Mud from Pork Mafia. You've seen me use this over and over and over again. And that's just, mm hmm Got little hints of honey, little brown sugar, little barbecue flavor. All right, I actually went to 325, so in between 350 and 300. Like I said, I don't want it to cook too fast. I want it to get some of that smoky flavor from the grill. So let's drop them in, let them do their thing. Put them in. I mean, we can't not go for a ride in the little Yoda while the fish are cooking. Can't not do it. All right, let's see, y'all. All right, here we go. You ready, bro? between 300 and 325 you know every time you open it you lose some temp but we're done now definitely don't want overdone fish don't want to let it go any longer than it needs to that's it right there y'all they all small thin fish don't need to let it go too long. all right for me it's cone y'all know it we got to put the cone on it was my first time searing a steak on the trigger I normally sear my steaks in a cast iron. I can tell you it is piping hot, but I'm gonna be very, very, very careful. I'm gonna let them steaks sear for about two minutes and I'm gonna check them. All right, my first time ever cooking steaks on a Traeger, I was hesitant to see if it could really sear, which it did a pretty decent job with the sear, but I babysat it. Like I did not leave it on there for more than like two minutes at a time before I checked it to see what was going on. We're still plenty medium rare, and I'm gonna tell you, dude, it's got some flavor. It has got some flavor. I mean, look at that. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Mmm, <laughs> bro. Let's move on to our fish we'll start with good old-fashioned catfish which we know is always good not bad lemon pepper 
somewhat overpowering. I probably would use something else or not use as much. Now we'll move on to largemouth bass, which we all know and love. All right, bassy bass, let's see what you got. Bassy bass is not bad at all. Once again, the lemon pepper. Now this is the Walmart lemon pepper, so maybe you got a better one. A little bit overpowering. And on to the invasive. Y'all know how we like to mess with invasives down here on outside the levees. Whether it's a neutral, a hog, whatever it is, we like to find our invasives, go catch them, go eat them. Let's see how they taste though. That's super mild. Extremely mild meat. Very, very mild. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, and we'll see y'all next time.